Hello everyone, it's Graham from Lakeside and welcome to this very, very windy day out there. Um, it's blown a bloody gale out there. Um, the video I did about two weeks ago, um, I said that I wouldn't do another video for a week or so because I wanted to make sure that I had um, good running on most of the locos I've got, which I've done. Um, and I'm pleased to say that um, nothing untowards at all has happened. Um, just one loco which has given me grief, um, which you know about, and um, <clears throat> I shall sort that out. It's the front bogey on the P2. Um, it runs okay, but that front bogey needs weighting down. Um, but apart from that, everything is running absolutely fine. Very, very pleased with the layout which I've got and also the track. So, um, what I did <clears throat> during the course of the beginning of the week and the weekend, I thought, right, I'm satisfied with <clears throat> all this half here by the platform. Um, satisfied enough to ballast it. Um, and this time round, I've gone for a light grey ballast rather than the brown I was using on the previous layout. It, basically it was just a, a ringing of the changes that's all it is uh, there's no sort of underlining um, change there apart from the fact that I thought I'd, I'd have something different um, <clears throat> so what I've done I've mixed 50 50 uh, light gray medium and fine ballast together because I just felt that the um, medium was a little bit too coarse so I thought, well, if I mix the two together, I should get something round about what I need. And it's it's done well. I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, so what I would do, I, I've been building models as well of um, Metcalf kits, um, which I'll explain to you shortly. So I'll take the camera off the stand and I'll just show you around the layout, what I've done so far. Okay. So, bye for now. Okay, so this is the track by the main platform area. Um, and there you can see the ballasting. Uh, so I glued it last night. Um, and with the aircon set at 18, this is now rock hard. This has dried off overnight, which is something I would have never have done without the aircon. It, it normally took about two to three days this time of year to dry off um, but it's absolutely bone dry and it's come out really well I'm very pleased with it. Um, I've got a couple of spurious granules on the track like you normally get like there's one here which I would just knock off with a scalpel. Um, there's a little bit over here look, on that part of the sleeper. Um, but I can take those off with a scalpel, there's no problem there. But the rest of it went down, well, all of it went down very, very well. Um, so what I've got is where the two tracks are narrow, I've got a flat surface. And where the up and down tracks are in between, I've got the trough. Uh, so if we look, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but you can see that this area is flat. The finger there. This area is flat, likewise with here, but where the <clears throat> two tracks here are wider, um, then I've got this trough running through. So I think that's worked out nicely. Um, I've checked all the points, the points are all working fine. I had one which was um, stuck, uh, which was this one. Um, and obviously glue had got down the back here, even though I'd mopped it up. Um, but I've released it and that's working fine now. So all these points are now working. Um, I've chopped off this piece of track here <coughs> to a dead end because I'm still going to obviously figure out what I'm going to do with this track here. Uh, I think I know what I'm going to do, but I thought, right, I will just chop it off dead straight and um, then I can start fresh carrying on and 
here if you remember um, I'm going to add a couple of inches of um, MDF outside here for an additional roadway which brings me nicely on to what's going to happen at the back um, now the retaining wall is going to stay uh, as I've said but that's because what I want to do is to board over the top here and have a fuller car system going and it will go along and there will be a turnaround section so it can loop back and run all the way along right the way up to here over the top again looping round and back along again so this area here is going to be a street scene with low relief buildings at the back and a roadway <coughs> so that's what's going to happen there now what I will do is this the roadway will be fixed in other words all that lot there on the top will be fixed but I will be able to take this away so that if I need to get to anything in there I can so the retaining wall will be there but I'll be able to remove it I don't think I will probably be removing it very often because it's literally just a storage yard and I, it's absolutely dead straight and if anything derails going up there then there's something seriously wrong um, so I don't think I will be crashing into it now I don't know if you guys remember but when I had my previous layout I had the <coughs> um, fiddle yard underneath and I had two remote cameras which I could switch on and see what was below and I will do the same with this I will have one camera that end and one camera this end here so that I can see um, what locos I've got in the storage yard without taking off the uh, retaining wall so they will come into use again <clears throat> so the retaining wall will come all the way around here and then exit and stop here and there will be a portal just here at the entrance so it would be like a not a tunnel as such but just an underpass and that's sitting on top will be the roadway okay so that's how the balance is looking and I've just got this track here the last track the sixth track to ballast uh, I couldn't do that last night because all this, this lot was here was wet and I didn't want to risk leaning over um, to ballast that track so now it's all dry I can now carry on and ballast that last sixth track which will run along there um, also what I've done <coughs> is I've only roughly come up to this level here on the ballast because obviously I've got the platform to go down once I've made the blank for the total length of the platform plus put these edging strips on um, then I can then uh, fill in along here and along here up against to the platform um, but I've got to, as you know remake these platforms they're not the right length they're just the old ones but at least it's given me the spacing I required so that I could lay the track uh, <clears throat> so that's taken me a week really to balance this lot um, I've taken me time because I wanted to get it looking reasonably good um, and then I can get my airbrush out and just airbrush some grime on the sleepers it'll just be a light a light covering and then where the, the loco stop in the, by the platforms I'll put some oil spillage on there as well just give it a little bit of extra depth and realism um, okay, so if we pan around, 
you can see the street scene come <laughs> that's not obviously where the street scene will be it's got to be behind me but you can see the buildings I'm gradually building up for the, for the high street <coughs> so I've got two little shops there got to have a model shop haven't we um, tobacconists and newspapers florists uh, fresh and uh, fruit and then we've got a bank and uh, another little shop Pandora's Fashions and here we've got the the old cinema which seems to be appearing on everybody's layout um, again I've got tobacconists there and uh, Rob's Place which is a clothing store a boutique I thought you might like to own one of those Rob at one stage with your style and design um, and then we've got a uh, insurance brokers electrical appliances and a pub go along there and then my favorite building is this one I'll just pan out um, is the departmental store and that is an absolutely fabulous building, not just to look at, but to build as well. Um, <clears throat> it's even got a revolving door. So that's the start of the shops to go along the back scene. So if you imagine that, the back scene, um, then I'll be able to have the fuller vehicles coming up and down along the high street and I'll have park buses and so forth, zebra crossings, traffic lights um, and now Fuller have introduced this digital system where you've got brake lights and indicators and all sorts of things, it's a fabulous system really looking forward to getting into building that which will be my next project I think which will be to start the street scene over at the back um, which I need to do really because that's furthest away and I like to build furthest away towards the front so that's really the next thing on the project list to do now to go along the, these are all Metcalf kits these um, now to go along with this one I've bought my very first kit which is made by Kingsway here now, unlike um, Metcalf, they are printed on thick sheet, um, but there's no cut lines. You have to cut them out and fold them, etc., and score them. Um, but they're, they're quite cheap as well. And the reason why I wanted it was because it was a second-hand car showroom, and that will fit lovely on that back scene area. So I'm looking forward to building that. It's going to be interesting to see how it comes out. Because it's uh, obviously a little bit more difficult because you have to cut out everything. That's the windows, the holes for the windows rather. Um, all around the shape here you have to cut around. So it's quite intricate. Uh, it's going to take a little while to do I think. But if it comes out looking as good as that photograph then it, sh it should come out looking nice. And I've got quite a few decent cars I can put in there which I can have for sale got that wind um, up here you can see part of the old um, village um, so I've taken I've sawn that out from the main part there you can see the cut out there um, I've taken that out purely because it was getting in the way to be honest um, but now that's there I can now determine what, I'll, what else I can cut off because I can cut up right up to here and then extend the gardens out um, and I should place that piece of MDF there into the baseboard over there and I'm undecided yet whether to have it raised or to cut it out flush because it's all 9mm uh, to cut it flush and sink this into the existing baseboard but there's no reason really why I can't just cut these, let's move that, 
why I can't cut these cross members off, the old cross members, cut those off and then just sit that directly onto the existing baseboard over there. Um, but I will have a look at the way that's um, made and see if I can take those cross members off easily enough. If I can, then I can just probably literally place it on there. <clears throat> but you see what I mean by the fact that I can now get to see all the details which I couldn't really do on the previous layout. I had to bend right over with the camera um, to be able to view these. Whereas I won't need to do that now. So that's about it. It doesn't look much, I know, but <clears throat> building these in the evening um, during the week plus that lot, which took forever and a day to do. Um, then there was quite a bit of work involved, plus, of course, running the trains as well. So I haven't been idle during these last two weeks by any means. Uh, I've run my track rubber, rubber over the track. I've had trains running on this this morning. Absolutely no problem. Lovely and smooth. Lovely to see them go around. So I will shut down now. And um, I've got a busy week ahead of me. Not railway, um, not railway orientated either. It's um, just stuff <laughs> which I've got to do. Uh, I've got Hazel's birthday of the weekend, so I won't have much time, but I'll see what I can get done. Good, okay, right, well I shall leave you now and with some small shots of trains running, I think, um, just to show you the, uh, the, there's some shots of trains running prior to this being ballasted, just where I was checking logos out, to be honest. Um, and um, plus some more today with the ballast down. Okay, so hopefully you found that of interest and um, I will speak to you again soon. Okay folks, so bye for now. Bye bye.